every human being on this planet has a breaking point. A point at which they want to give up or quit because things don't go their way or things get too tough. Over the course of this sculpture, I thought about breaking. Quitting because I felt like it was an impossible task and I was going to fail. It was simply too hard. I spent over 400 hours creating this sculpture and went through the most physically and mentally demanding carves of my entire life. Two months later, as I sit here in my closet doing this voiceover, I can honestly tell you, this is the best sculpture I've done in my entire life. Now, thanks to a friendly neighbor, I was able to get this giant piece of wood into my side yard. This is a giant piece of old growth redwood burl estimated to be over a thousand years old. As soon as I saw this piece, I knew this is the one I've been looking for for years for this project. I let it sit for six months so I could finish up some commissioned work and also let it dry out. Moving this thing by myself, as you can see, is not easy. I was lucky enough to get it on some rollers and then roll it into the middle of the side yard and ready to cut down. After drawing my side profile and overhead template of the skull, I quickly realized that it is much wider than I originally anticipated. I actually don't have the width I need on this piece of wood, so I'm actually going to have to hose off my outline, cut this thing a little more square, and see what kind of size and orientation I actually want this to be on this piece of wood. This is not something you want to see on this piece of wood. From the outside it looked so solid, yet when you cut into it you get this huge void in the middle. And now kind of looking at the outside, this life-size T-Rex is going to have to narrow down a little bit to fit. No more messing around here. I'm gonna make a big decision and I'm gonna cut this thing diagonally so I can have hopefully enough material for the upper and lower portions of the skull on both these separate pieces. Oh no. The wood had other plans and that void leaked up into both sides of these pieces as well. So right now I do not have very high hopes and I'm either gonna to have to completely downsize this or have basically a void in a certain section of this skull. I just realized I haven't even told you guys about this piece of wood yet. Today, old growth redwood is scarce. Since the 1850s, 95% of old growth redwoods were cut down and harvested. Since then, they have become protected and the only ones you can get today are the ones that are salvaged from lumber yards. Because of this, old growth redwoods are highly sought after. And what I have here is something extra special because it's not only an old growth redwood, but it's an old growth redwood burl, the prized possession in the woodworking world for the swirling color patterns. Okay, I have a bit of a problem here. As you can see, I have this massive void and there's gonna be no way of carving around this. This is going to be in the finished piece. And the way I see it, I have three options. One, I could basically do nothing and kind of see where this void ends up on this sculpture. Two, I could fill it with epoxy, either black or clear. Option number three would be to patch it. Basically take another piece of wood and try and seamlessly patch this for a fix. The smartest move right now is to actually just leave it, continue to carve, and see where this void ends up on the finished piece. So we're gonna go ahead and do that. Let's get back to it. I forgot to mention, what you saw me just wear in there was my very first t-shirt design. And if you wanna show support for my channel, a great way would be signing up for my very first t-shirt pre-order. I'll put a link in the description for these two tees. Part of the reason why this is my favorite sculpture I've ever done is because it's exactly what I've wanted to do. Up until this point, I've only taken client work, meaning someone comes to me with their idea and I have to carve what they want, how they want it, 
and there's a lot of parameters and restrictions placed on me when it's someone commissioning the piece versus me just doing something because I love to do it. I've always wanted to carve a T-Rex skull. From the moment I started carving, this has always been my ultimate goal. And to have a piece of wood like this in the size that I want is just an absolute dream come true. And because this isn't a commissioned piece, it means it will become one of the first sculptures I've listed for sale in over three years. Stick around till the end of the video and see how you can purchase this sculpture. As I put the head on the lower jaw and step back to look at it, I can only think one thing. This looks a lot like Big Bird, which basically means I have a ton more to carve and take away and narrow down. So let's get right into it. For the majority of this carving, I'm using burrs and discs made by Cutsall. All the links to these tools will be in the description, and thank you to Cutsall for supporting my craft and my sculptures. It's at this moment when I realize this is not like my other sculptures. All of my animals and subjects I've previously carved were solid, and I could get to all the areas that I needed to be carved fairly easy. With this skull, not only do I have to carve the outside shapes, but also the inside. Getting the right tool at the right angle to take off material was absolutely exhausting. At the end of the day, my arms were jelly and my forearms and hands would constantly cramp from holding the tools firmly for so long at all the different angles. This really took it out of me. It's time to call it for the day and I'll get back to this thing tomorrow. All right, now before we get started, it's time for a shop upgrade. I'm gonna go pick up a Mr. Cool DIY ductless mini split. Mr. Cool is known for having the best DIY system out there that is super easy to install. I already looked at a couple videos. All you do is follow their very simple instructions. You don't have to go hire an HVAC specialist. You don't have to set up appointments or pay extra for them. This is as easy as it gets, and I cannot wait to install this thing myself. One of the great things about this system is it not only cools your environment, but it can also heat it when you need it in the winter. I'm pumped to go pick this thing up and install it in my shop. Huge thank you to Mr. Cool for sponsoring this video. Now let's get right back to the carving. I may have just breezed by this in about 30 seconds of video editing, but carving out the inside sections almost had me at my breaking point. What the most frustrating thing was, I simply couldn't angle the tool appropriately to take off the material. Because of this, what should have taken only a couple days ended up taking an entire week to hollow out this inside section. was carving the lower jaw this entire piece came flying off. Luckily it all landed safely and it was still intact in one piece so I could easily take some total boat four minute epoxy, slap it on there and get back to carving immediately. And 
and so far so good. I'm really liking how this lower jaw is shaping out. Now I want to put this with the top section to make sure our widths are the same and they connect accurately. And as of right here, you know, it's starting to look a little bit more like a T-Rex. It still has that kind of bird-like appearance and it's looking really weird without the teeth, but we'll get to that. Uh, but first we need to narrow this thing down and take off a ton of mass. Before starting the sculpture, I had no idea the complexity of a T-Rex skull. There are different bones to shape and connection point seams to carve in. This was a daunting task and I know this isn't 100% anatomically correct, but I really want to challenge myself and try and nail it down as close as I can. It's not until this point that I finally made a decision on that void above the left eye socket. I actually love it. I think it actually makes it look more authentic. It looks like a real fossil and it kind of makes sense because this is an old growth redwood that's basically a fossil. I'd love to hear what you guys think. Would you have kept this or would you have got rid of it via a patch or epoxy? Let me know down in the comments. As you can imagine, it was just as difficult to sand these inside areas as it was to carve them. I ended up rough sanding this piece for what seems like a week straight. And once I'm done with that, it's time to finally start making these teeth. And here I'm just finding pieces that have the best grain patterns and swirls of color. And to find that, you just spray it with water and then you can see what it would look like as if finish were put on it. The longest tooth that I'll be making for this sculpture is around 5 inches, but after doing some research, I'm blown away. Did you guys know that a T-Rex tooth can be up to 8.5 inches long? That is insane. And while continuing my research and looking from skull to skull, I noticed that there are these tiny little dimples on both the upper and lower jaws, and I have no clue structurally what these things even do. They're just like little indentations in the bone. Anyways, it's something that I definitely want to add on this to get that more realistic look. One of the lower jaws there's been a little bit of a crack develop and in order to fill that quick I'm using some Total Boat UV resin and this stuff is awesome. All you do is expose it to UV light whether that be the sun or a little flashlight and it will cure instantly. It's really cool and I use it to fill these little gaps like this quite often. Moral of the story here whenever I seem to be in need of a quick fix I always reach for some Total Boat so thank you Total Boat for supporting my craft. 
And now it's time to start thinking about how this thing's gonna be displayed. And I have this little 3D reference model I've been using and I actually love the way it's displayed. It has a little platform for the lower jaw to rest on and little kind of nestles in there. And I think that's a great idea. So I'm gonna bust out the laser, make sure we have perfectly even sides and I'm gonna replicate this pedestal. camera I was testing the sculpture on the platform and I ran into an issue that's easier for me to show you in this reference sculpture. All the weight is on the back jaw which in turn lifts up the front end. In order to support the backside weight I decided to cut a 45 degree angle into the platform and also into the jaws so it basically locks them in place there's nowhere for them to move. And once they were glued up I tested it out and it worked exactly as planned. I purchased this metal base at a place called Flowline Design and I really like the black organic looking shape and I think it'll really complement this tabletop as well as the sculpture. I brought the tabletop over to my buddy Alex's house and we routed out the bottom and then did eight terrifying cuts on the table saw in order to create grooves for brass splines to really accent this piece. While I was finishing up the brass splines, Alex went ahead and cut out the base of this so we could put LED lights inside the base. This is my very first time dyeing wood jet black and I gotta say I absolutely love the look. I chose oak because I wanted to be able to see the wood grain. I don't want to just paint the wood. I want to basically have black wood and that's what this dye does. And I think it really, really just highlights these brass accents. And if you don't know, now you know, this sculpture is called Old Red. I thought it was a fitting name because it's made out of an old growth redwood. And obviously, you know, fossils are old. So, Old Red, it fits. I absolutely love how this pedestal turned out. The black on black with the brass accents that really make this thing pop. And then you throw the LED lights on top of that. This thing is just gonna bring this sculpture to a whole new level. And I cannot wait to put the jaws and skull on this and see what it looks like all together. What you guys have seen up to this point is really only a fraction of the effort that went into this sculpture. I spent so many days carving and not even picking up the camera to hit record because I was focused and determined to put my full effort in without having to worry about camera angles. This is without a doubt the hardest sculpture I've ever done. I thought about breaking, quitting because it was too hard, but you know what? I pushed through all those negative thoughts and came out on the other side with the best sculpture I've created in my entire life. All right guys, I need your help. This will be listed for sale on my website. I will put a link down in the description. If you know anybody that may be interested in a piece like this, a dinosaur collector, uh, just a private art collector, or maybe you have a connection to a museum that may want something like this, please reach out and let me know. Let's hit the lights and show you guys this thing.